It's awesome to be here with you in London. Do you ever look back at where you've come from? There's really not a day that goes by that I don't think about it. I have come a long way and it feels like a lifetime, but it also feels like the beginning. Matthew Burgess, the boy from Pornike, has been here in London for over 25 years. He's a top chef and has learnt his craft from the very best. Right, how are you feeling? Good, 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 good chef. That was pathetic. How are you feeling? Good, good, Hi, lovely people. OK, we are going to make the most delicious lasagna al forno. You've worked with some of the, the celebrity chefs, the big gun chefs, Gordon Ramsay and Jamie Oliver. Just tell me about those experiences. Um, it must have been an unreal moment. Yeah, it was. It, it's like, you know, w working uh, for Gordon, um, I was at Maze. Um, Did he swear at you? <laughs> the thing is, is that I, I probably met Gordon, he wasn't actually in the kitchens, but like, yeah. you know, I probably met him a couple of times uh, where he actually came into the restaurants and I was cooking for him. There was a, a very nerve wracking time where he did come in and he was sort of standing behind me as I was running some food out on the pass. And, you know, the, all the chefs were sort of like, laughing because they knew that it was standing behind me when I turned around I sort of probably let out a little scream yeah. um, but you know he's a great guy he, Jamie you know I, I loved working for Jamie um, and count him as a close friend now you know um, I was very very lucky to open one of his sort of flagship restaurants Threadneedle Street and that was an incredible experience I adored working for him these days Matthew designs menus for high-end restaurants around town this one's called Beast what do you have here? So this is Beast and uh, this is one of the meat fridges. Yep. How expensive are these pieces of meat? Really expensive. Yeah. So, you know, you've got some from USA here. You've also got some from Denmark. Um, you've got some British stuff in there as well. I think the most expensive thing about these is that once they start off at a certain size, they're actually reducing this because they're slightly dehydrating. And so you're losing money on that. But what you're doing is adding flavor. Despite cooking with some of the very best in the world, it was actually never part of the big plan. My love was always music. Yeah. I won the 1987 Beatbox Champion of Wellington. Wow. Um, it was, yeah, I was going up against people like King Capisi. Yeah. You know, um, DJ Raw is a very good friend of mine and, and has been for years and came to a time when, in probably my uh, late teens, where I um, got an opportunity to go cook in a kitchen. Um, and the whole reason for me to go there was to also be able to put in to make a tape that we could uh, get out to potential recording studios. So cooking was never my vocation. Yeah. It was always music. We're going to have to hear some beatboxing later. At <laughs> least <laughs> <Please> not. <laughs> you need to calm down. We've all learned how just intense, how crazy it can be in the kitchen from shows like The Bear and Boiling Point. Matthew has lived it. Service! How do you get over it when you don't have a great night, I guess? When it's a bit chaotic or when something's uh, not quite working? I love that question. Yeah. Because it, a lot of people don't ask that question because to be a great chef, yeah. you have to uh, have bad services. Yeah. Um, you know, anybody will tell you that within that. I think that's what really defines you and how you get over that. And I, I can tell you the amount of bad services that you had. When you're walking out of that kitchen and you're disheartened and, you know, you're broken and, you, you know, a lot of things have gone wrong in that night. The biggest thing is, is that you have to pick yourself up. I'm not a chef through skills. I'm a chef through thousands of mistakes and of just me just correcting those mistakes every single day. If you could go back uh, and talk to the young version of yourself and give him some tips, what would you say? Bro, that's an awesome question again. Um, I actually talk to my younger self every day. Yeah. And the tips of usually that I give him yeah. is I forgive him. Oh. I forgive him for his mistakes. Yeah. For Matthew, as a young Māori boy trying to find his way in the suburbs of Pōneke, it could have all ended so differently. Yeah, when we first spoke, you said there was another potential pathway that could have been a bit shaky for you. I was, what we could say is, I suppose, starting to go off the rails. Um, so I rebelled a lot. I rebelled a lot against my mother, and um, that was also hard for her. At the time, she had just recently been made redundant. So she was going through her own sort of journey of, I suppose, depression and that. I took that as an opportunity to 
partner and to uh, hang out with, I, I guess, the wrong people. Yeah. Um, and I, as always, growing up as a young Māori, I always felt I needed to belong to something yeah. and be part of something. And, you know, when I sort of was growing up during those times, I was exposed to that. Yeah. And we'd be going to go to friends' houses and I'd be watching these patch members and gang members come in and out of the house and drive these amazing cars. And, yeah. you know, I, want, I wanted some of that, you know, and it got to a stage where, um, you know, I, I was, you know, about to prospect and my really good friends at the time, like sort of cornered me and said, don't do this. I suppose at that point it was a, it was a crossroads in my life yeah. where I understood and I always think being brought up by my mother for that and then I knew somewhere there was an inkling in that when I had my friend standing there and I could hear my mum in my head going no don't do it yeah. and you know my, my best friend at the time he went prospected for the gang and you know he's now in prison yeah. um, but you know his, his past is very different to mine. Do you ever uh, think about that moment? Every day. Yeah. Every single day. After a stellar career working in the hottest restaurants in London, Matthew is now in the food development area, where he creates menus for top restaurants and 15 partners, and he gets to do it all at home. How many times have you burnt yourself in your career? Yeah. Again, great question. I would say probably in the hundreds. This is his backyard. I'm just making you guys more and more hungry as we go. Hey, don't worry. It's nearly here, brothers. Awesome. <laughs> and this is his kitchen. He designed it all. Chefs from across London come to Matthew with ideas, and he delivers them on a plate. It's all about collaboration and creativity. Matthew also has a presence on social media. In fact, he has over 30,000 followers, showing off all his good work. Raura, Apuro, Poaka, Blackfire. Done. Matthew is inspired by his old family cookbooks. Kapoor, so what do we have here? Um, so these are recipes, basically, yeah. that um, I found when my mum passed away. They were in a cupboard, I, you know, I didn't really know that she had them, but they're handwritten recipes dating back from what I can gather to my great-great-grandmother. So some of these recipes are from, especially like these ones, are from even before that they came to the UK. So, you know, this is a recipe for marmalade, for blackcurrant jam. Yeah. But back in the day, the milk and the butter and the sugars were very different yeah. to what we receive in the supermarket today. So it's been a really interesting journey of trying to recreate these dishes. It also kind of shows that uh, you've got cooking in your whakapapa, in your genes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And I think that this is why it sort of really uh, was easy for me to pick it up. Does your brain ever stop? Never. Never? Never. I, I, I have ADHD. Yeah. Um, and I use it as my superpower. Yeah. Um, and I feel that after cooking for so many years, you, I have so many of these ideas and so many of these incredibly creative ideas that usually come at about three o'clock in the morning. So yeah. much to the detriment of my wife, when I'm sitting there like a three-year-old child waking her up going, go, oh my God, what do you think about this dish? And she's just like, I don't care. I just want to go to sleep. Matthew was raised by his Pākehā mother, so learning about his taha Māori has been a long journey, but he's embracing it all, in life and in his cooking. What does it mean to be Māori for you? Yeah. I suppose throughout my whole life, I've been sort of searching for uh, who I am, and just sort of recently I've sort of discovered a few family members, and with that came sort of the understanding of, of who I am, um, as a as a man and you know I I've always lived in two worlds but you know the, the main world that I know that I've always been is I've been Māori you know um, so for me having every single element of that within what I do it's so important. Manakitanga is central to most Māori culture which means hospitality or the art of giving or looking after your guests and it's what I've done all my life. Being able to be in London on this stage yeah. to be a proud Māori is everything to me.